Luke McCaw gave the Ottawa Senators a 2-1 OT victory over the Campbell 73s when he scored 231 into the extra period. The win by Ottawa clinched the best of seven series, four games to one. The Senators were led by goalie Ian Andriano, who finished with 34 saves while allowing one goal. Andriano certainly lowered his goals against average, which was 1.69 entering the contest. Ottawa was paced by Macau, who had one goal. The Senators forced Kempville goalie Nicholas Hodgins to work between the pipes, taking 51 shots on the evening. Louis Charles Crotu also scored for Ottawa. In addition, Ottawa received assists from Jody Sullivan, Jaron Burke, and Jim Pearson, who each chipped in one. Ottawa was unable to stop the 73s from sending pucks towards the net, and Kempo eventually piled up 35 shots on goal. The 73s did not rack up many penalties in the contest, registering a minimal one minor and two minutes in penalty time. Kempville was led by Owen Guy, who scored the team's only goal. Guy scored on the power play 324 into the second period to make the score 1-0 Kempville. The 73s had gotten the advantage when Senators Cameron White was sent off for hooking. Jack Hale assisted in the tally. Ottawa incurred six minutes in penalty time with three minors. Nicholas Hodgins made 49 saves for Kempville on 51 shots. The 73s registered one goal on three power play opportunities. With the win, the Junior Sens will take on the Hawkesbury Hawks in the CCHL semifinal, while Carleton Place will face the Brockville Braves. Martin, you just said it was a crazy game and uh, a fitting way to end it, kind of a fluky goal in that uh, second overtime period. Yeah, we just told the guys that it, would, it was going to be a greasy goal and Pearson was able to, to stop the puck off their breakout and just send the puck in and, and uh, Caught the goalie off guard, and Macaw was able to, to wrap it around and, and score that goal that you know we kind of we were waiting for uh, <laughs> for a few periods. Yeah. Um, it was a good game. I thought both teams played very well. I thought we, we we brought our best game in the in the first overtime and even to start the second. So we had a good feeling about it, but for sure we're we're happy with the win. We didn't want to go there for a game six. Now they started by getting the first goal of the game. They had just won on, or won at home, and it, it, it had to be kind of mentally in the back of your mind, like, we can't let these guys back in the series. No, we, we yeah, uh, I'm not going to lie. I was thinking that at the same time, I had full confidence in, in the guys we have in the dressing room. Uh, we've lost four guys already in the first round, and only five games, and we lost one more tonight. So uh, we knew uh, the more games we would play in this series, the more bodies we would lose. They're very physical. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, we're, we're going to take that week to, to recover. And hopefully the guys that are injured right now uh, will be fine for next week because obviously uh, Oxbury will be a tough opponent. Now, you mentioned that they're a physical team. And, you know, as you get longer into a game, as you get into the second overtime and, you know, it, say nothing had happened, you get to the third overtime, that's got to be draining for the players as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I said, the fact that we had three forwards out, plus yeah. you know, losing one guy in the, in the third period. Uh, we knew that you know, we had to score early, but bottom line is, is there was no goal in the first 20 minutes of overtime. But again, there's no excuse in the playoffs. They had you know, a key injury for the first four games of this series. Owen Guy is one of the best players in the league, so obviously I'm not going to complain if we have four or five guys out. I think uh, it was a good series. and. Uh, you know, we knew that Kemville would be tough, but I think because we had that three nothing lead, we kind of took for granted that you know, it would be maybe an easy series. And obviously tonight showed that it wasn't easy at all. It's not easy to get pucks past that goaltender either, Nick Hodgins. No, I think we got to him early in the series, but that shutout against us last night kind of, I think it gave him the confidence uh, he needed. And you know, that's a goalie that was very good all year long, especially against us. And again, last night tonight, he showed why uh, you know, he was able to to bring Kentville back in the playoff race in the second half this season. And it's got to be reassuring knowing that you have Ian Andriano in your own net. Yeah, I think Ian's arguably the best goaltender in the league. I know some people might disagree, but for us, he just comes out big every time with the big save. And, you know, it's just the timing that saves. I thought we had full control in overtime. We turned the puck over. Tug Nut gets a breakaway. And that kid's a heck of a player. And, you know, Ian's able to make that big save. Um, and then obviously we got that goal in the second OT, but if he doesn't make that save, we don't get that chance. You mentioned that three forwards out, you know, it, it kind of strains the forwards. Does that put a little bit more of an emphasis on defense and defense first hockey? Yeah, and that's the way we've 
played, I guess, for the last two years, but the first three games, kind of you know, the fact that we scored so many goals. Yeah. Uh, but we are you know, a defense-first defense type of team, and I think the fact that if you look at guys like Morales and Anderson, you lose a lot of speed. And we win games because of our speed. So I think both players will be okay for next weekend. Uh, but, again, we're, we count on our depth to go far in the playoffs. If we miss three, four guys, we don't have a superstar player that can maybe score three on one night. Uh, and this is why I feel that we need to play four lines. Quickly, before we go, um, just touching on the next series against Hawksbury. Coach of uh, Hawkesbury is Rick Dorval. You spent a couple of years behind the bench with him, so it's got to be you know big for you guys. But also, in the same, it's a bit of a storyline where you know him and he knows you. Yeah, uh, obviously, I've worked with Rick for uh, I think three years, and you know we we still have a good relationship today. I, I think he did a heck of a job with the Hawks this year. Uh, him and Ian Anderson just rebuilding the entire roster, uh, and he made uh, two big key acquisition uh, acquisition at the deadline. Uh, two former major junior players, and you know, and again, a, a very good goaltender, which I felt he did not have early in the season. So, I think that's the reason why they had such a good second half. And, and Rick's, uh, I think, similar to me in terms of he's a playoff type of coach. He motivates his guys, and we know they're going to be ready. Uh, we again expect a long series. Congrats, Barté, and thank you. Thanks.